Now we'll review rubeola, commonly known as measles, and rubella, also known as German or three-day measles. The best way to describe these diseases is by comparing them. Viruses cause both diseases and both are highly communicable. Measles take longer to resolve than rubella does. By the way, rubeola is usually called measles, while rubella tends to be called rubella rather than German measles. Both diseases are spread by droplet nuclei from nose and mouth fluids. Rubella has a longer incubation period, which is 18 days, compared with rubeola, which is about 9 days. Rubella tends to be a milder disease and lasts for a shorter period of time than measles does. Next, the signs and symptoms of the two types of measles. Rubeola, that's measles, is definitely the most serious of the two illnesses. Fever can be as high as 105 degrees Fahrenheit, that's 40.6 degrees Celsius, and children act and appear very ill. A cough is not uncommon. Children who have measles have red eyes that are very light sensitive while they have a fever and rash. In contrast, rubella is a milder disease and fever seldom goes above 100 degrees Fahrenheit. That's 37.8 degrees Celsius. Children develop swollen glands in their neck and behind their ears and have a stuffy or runny nose and mild conjunctivitis. Boys sometimes develop testicular pain. Both diseases produce characteristic rashes. The measles rash begins on the forehead while the rubella rash begins at the hairline. Both spreading in a descending manner with the rash appearing on the feet last. In both cases, when the rash subsides, the affected areas will flake. The rashes also look different. Measles produces a large flat lesion that is red to brown in color, while rubella produces a rash that's between 2 and 3 millimeters in diameter and appears pink or light red. Lesions from both diseases can merge, forming patches. Neither rash itches. One identifying sign of measles is cuplic spots. They are small, red, irregularly shaped spots with bluish-white centers that can be seen inside the mouth. Rubella does not produce mouth lesions. Now let's move on to complications. Again, measles is the more serious disease unless rubella infects a pregnant woman in the first trimester. I'll get back to that. First, you'll see that complications of measles range from ear infections to myocarditis and encephalitis. As many as 90% of children who become infected with measles develop ear infections. Bronchitis and pneumonia are also fairly common. Rubella tends to affect the joints, causing arthritis or arthralgia, although it can also cause more serious complications such as encephalitis and bleeding disorders. As I said earlier, rubella is a serious disease when it infects pregnant women during the first trimester. It causes congenital rubella syndrome, a condition that can result in mental retardation, deformities, or deafness in the infant. Measles and rubella are treated very similarly, but remember, these diseases can be prevented. It is always better to prevent than to treat. The MMR vaccine protects against both diseases. The MMR stands for measles, mumps, and rubella. Parent education is so important because these diseases are so preventable. As for managing them, make sure parents understand to give acetaminophen for fever and discomfort, but never aspirin. The use of aspirin for children who have viral illnesses has been associated with development of Rye syndrome, a potentially life-threatening disorder. Since rubella is a fairly mild disease, treatment other than acetaminophen is unnecessary unless the child runs a high fever. In that case, the primary care provider should be notified. Children who have measles must be monitored for ear infections and pneumonia.